Hi people, it's Sarkovist here and I'm afraid what I have today is a little bit of a rant and it's about PC gaming and I've mentioned this before but I feel myself mentioning it again because it happens so often now. It seems time and time again PC games are being released in an unfinished state and it's becoming a little bit more of a joke now because it's so frequent. It doesn't just happen to certain studios, for a bit it was just Ubisoft, but if you want to count in this generation of gaming, so this console generation with multi-platforms, it seems that stuttering is a frequent problem with so many multi-platform releases and low performance. Because although we get to enjoy all these amazing graphics, and just the example I'm using here is Dying Light on the PC, and I have absolutely no problem with the graphics, no problem with the gameplay, I actually quite like the game. It's not my maybe most preferred genre, but I do enjoy the game for what it is. But I did notice that it had stuttering, which, as I say, is a problem that occurs with so many PC games these days. It's crazy. And the thing I always do when this happens to me is I have to check, is this what happens to more than me? Because you have to be careful. It could just be your setup. Uh, so I always go to the forums. I check multiple sources, make sure it's not just me. And more often than not, it's a widespread issue. And you'll see countless articles of people mentioning that this is a problem. And, and performance as a phenomenon on PC is a really unstable thing because it can be really good, that's the advantage of a PC. You can uh, really pimp out your hardware, get the best GTX 980, maybe even have a dual GPU. But at the same time, because of these multi-platform releases, sometimes the PC platform can get neglected and there can be major issues to completely detract from the advantages. And I'll be perfectly honest, there have been many times where I've regretted getting the PC version and have just wished that I had gone for the console version. I'm not one of these people who hates it when a game is 30 frames per second. Yes, I have mentioned before and I still say that I prefer 60. I mean, who doesn't prefer 60? But I don't, when I hear a game is 30, I don't go, oh god, what are they doing? They've ruined it. They've ruined the game. I'm not one of these people. I, As long as it's consistent, I'm fine with that. Fine with it. I'm okay. I'm not... So I'd rather 60, but I'm fine with 30. But something I am not fine with, and I don't think anyone is fine with, is stuttering. And also, I have to mention what stuttering is, because so many people wonder what people mean by stuttering, because people have different reasons for it. Some people just call 20 frames per second stuttering. What I mean by stuttering is the game literally pausing for a second or so, and it really creates a sense of disruption. It can be for less than a second. If it's happening regularly, it becomes very annoying and it's distracting. That is the worst thing. So even if you're not a performance whore, you, you know, you're not too fast if a game runs too well, you can play a game at 20 FPS, say, even if you can do that. Stuttering is just so distracting, you cannot look past it. It's so difficult. It's like screen tearing. It's, it's another, something like that. Although, unlike screen tearing, there isn't a fix for it because V-Sync is the obvious fix. I wish there was a fix for it. And I do tend to wonder what causes this, because the first time I noticed a game having this with, as a major issue was Watch Dogs, and that came out in 2014. And I recently went back and played it to do a uh, Did It Live Up To The Hype review. And uh, what I noticed was that you could eliminate the major stuttering issue that still exists in the game, by the way, which is very annoying, by limiting it to 30 frames per second. That actually eliminated it, apart from the occasional thing, but who cares about the occasional stutter? If it's every 15 minutes or even 10 minutes, to be honest, who cares? It's when it's every 30 seconds. That's annoying. But uh, I've, no I've noticed that when you play a game at 30 frames per second, when the console version is also 30 frames per second, that can eliminate it, which is quite curious to me. It makes me wonder if a game was designed specifically for 30 frames per second and that making it go any higher is actually causing issues for the engine. So what I've had to do in this game, because there is no official way of limiting the frame rate as far as I can tell, I can't find a limiter, I have just pushed the uh, graphics up to as high as my PC can deal with, which is a bit of a band-aid solution because as a result, you might even notice it here, it will occasionally drop down to 20 FPS, but that's quite rare. I know some people could say, why don't you go into the NVIDIA control panel and select Adaptive VSync Half Refresh Rate. Well, the thing is, by doing that, you do uh, cause screen tearing. Yes, it's not as bad as turning VSync off entirely, but it's still annoying. It, it is still there. It is, trust me, it is, I'm very sensitive to screen tearing. But uh, all this technical stuff aside, the fundamental point of what I'm saying here is that these developers need to wait if they have to to get these games right for the PC because it's becoming 
so frequent now, it's becoming so frustrating, and they are at risk of really pissing off their fan base on the PC. There is the argument that if you buy a game day one, you sort of deserve what you get in that you haven't waited for reviews and you haven't waited for people to make sure the game is okay, but really, that isn't fair passing the blame onto the consumer. It is the developer's job, the people who are taking your money, to make a game that is at least fit for purpose. It allows you to play it without any of these major glitches that should really have been dealt with before the game came out. I do get where that point comes from waiting for the game, and it is a sensible thing to do. And honestly, if you have you know, if you can wait, I would always recommend doing that. But I think if you know, if you're like me, you're a real gaming enthusiast, sometimes you just want to play a game day one, and it's just frustrating when you play it day one and it's just not working uh, as intended or as you would at least expect it to work. I think it's important that videos like this are made or this message is spread because as a group, as the consumer, we are all friends. We're all in the same boat here. We all want the same thing. We want the best product possible. And there's no sense trying to brush away these kind of things to apologize for the mistakes that the company make. Unless, of course, they aren't really mistakes. I understand that some people can be real uh, vultures, really go for the throat sometimes. If no one ever says no or points out the problems with a product, then there's no reason, no incentive for them to improve. I think the reason that Techland were good enough to bring out a patch so quickly to address some of these issues probably wasn't because they uh, noticed internally that there were issues with the game or they would have dealt with them you know, before the game came out. It's because they noticed that people were complaining or just uh, pointing out the issues with the game and noticed that they had to take action because the consumers were speaking out. And it is an important thing to do. It is better to complain than to be complacent. So if you agree with me, if you're a PC gamer and you're getting annoyed at so many of these half-assed releases, do let me know in the comments. I'd be glad to hear that I'm not the only one getting annoyed by this. So uh, as always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.